Okay, so for those of you that took the PSAT today or if you were absent, uh, first thing I want to do uh, is let you see the answers to the homework. If you haven't already checked those, so I'm going to put these up. Please um, pause the video so that you can check these answers and then resume the video after you have checked your answers. So let me zoom out just a little. There were 20 of these writing formulas. Um, remember, your final formulas should have only symbols and subscripts. If you have a polyatomic ion, um, it's mandatory you put parentheses if you have a subscript here, like in these two. Um, it's not mandatory if there's only one polyatomic ion, but I would suggest putting it there at least for now until you get really comfortable with these polyatomics. You should have no charges left in the formulas. So please pause this as my video only allows me to record 10 minutes. So pause it, check your answers, and any that we need to go over, please ask about them in class. All right. The remainder of this little video lesson here is just to talk to y'all a little bit about the polyatomic ions that I want y'all to learn. And so I'm gonna give you some hints, some things that helped me as I was learning these. Um, the 22 polyatomic ions that I want us to focus on, um, commit to memory, I've tried to type these up so that they are um, kind of grouped into their little patterns, if you will. Um, you'll notice a couple of things here. The endings are very important. Most of your polyatomics are going to end in A-T-E or I-T-E, eight and it. Notice this one's phosphate, phosphite, bisulfate, sulfate, sulfite, chromate and dichromate, nitrate, nitrite. So notice as you go down, they end in eight or I. Now there are two that I gave you that do not, cyanide and hydroxide. These do not end in eight or I, so they end in I, like many of your binary um, compounds with their nonmetals. And then we have a positive one, a cation. This is the only cation, ammonium, and it ends in IUM. Now this is your only cation of the polyatomics that I'm giving you guys to learn. All right, so that's a couple of things I want to point out. The endings, pay attention to that. So on the formulas column here, I've given you the formulas with the charges for these ions. All right, so there's 22 of these, and here's the first little pattern I want to, to share with you that will help simplify, hopefully, your learning of this. Okay, so this makes not a whole lot of sense right now, but in the context of polyatomic ions, it will. So write down this, save. You eight more than you eight. <clears throat> okay, so remember eight and eight are the common endings, and it has to do with the number of oxygens in your polyatomic ion. So if you remember this saying, and then you memorize the formulas that end in ATE, for example, phosphate. PO4 with a negative 3 charge. Sulfate is SO4 with a negative 2 charge. Chlorate, ClO3 with a negative 1 charge. Nitrate, NO3 with a negative 1 charge. And there's carbonate, CO3 with a negative 2 charge. All right, so here I've written down five formulas for polyatomic ions that end in A-T-E. Notice they all have in common, they have oxygens in them. That's kind of where the ending, that's where the significance of the ending is. So memorize these five. Now you can tell from the other element kind of what the other part of the name is going to be. So this contains phosphorus, so phosphate. Sulfur, so sulfate. Chlorine, so chlorate. Nitrate, carbonate. All right, so these have... Cousins is what I call them, if you want to think of them that way. But they have a corresponding polyatomic ion that is similar, but the formula is slightly different, and so the name is different. You ate more than you eight means that the one that ends in A-T-E has one more oxygen in the formula than the one that ends in I-T-E. So, for example, if you memorize phosphate, then you automatically know phosphite is going to be exactly the same, but it's going to have one fewer oxygen. So you ate more than you ate means the eight one has one more oxygen. So this is going to be PO3, same charge, negative 3. Sulfite, SO, 
3, negative 2. These are just patterns, y'all. Chlorate, so chlorite is CLO2, same charge, negative 1. Nitrite, NO2, negative 1, one less oxygen. Carbonate does not have, um, I'm not having y'all learn the carbonite ion, so we're not going to do a twin for this one or a cousin for this one. So here, if we know these five, we really know six, seven, eight, nine ions, and there's 22 that I gave you. Now there is another one that I want to add to this little pattern, and it's related to chlorate and chloride. So I also gave y'all ClO4, negative one. Now notice, same number of chlorines, but this one has an extra oxygen than the chlorate. Notice the charge is the same. So this extra oxygen is why the name is per chlorate. It's hyper. That's where it comes from. We get our word hyper from. Latin per means more than. So it has one more oxygen. So this is chlorate. So this is perchlorate. It's hyper in its oxygens. So now we memorize five formulas and we really know ten. Okay? Now, another thing I want to point out to you is that there is a bisulfate that I gave you. So here's sulfate. Bisulfate is also known by the name hydrogen sulfate. So let's think about this way. If you have sulfate, SO4 negative 2, and we learned that hydrogen, when he forms his ion, the most common ion is positive 1, the cation. So let's say that hydrogen comes up and attaches to sulfate ion. Hydrogen ion attaches to sulfate ion. Well, if it attaches, bring it all together as a formula. HSO4, so we're going to bring that formula over. HSO4, okay. I added hydrogen to sulfate, so it's called hydrogen sulfate. Now notice it has a charge. So this had a positive 1 charge. This has a negative 2 charge. So if you just add positive 1 and negative 2, the overall charge here is going to be a minus 1. So you'll notice on your polyatomic list when you find hydrogen sulfate, it's HSO4 negative 1. So that's kind of how you can figure out your charge. It's HSO4 negative 1. So here we've learned five polyatomic formulas, and we really know 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of them. So again, these are just patterns, y'all. Um, a couple of other things. Hydroxide, um, OH, has a negative one charge. He doesn't really have a twin, but remember, if you were to put it in the order of how it sounds, hydroxide, you would think hydrogen comes first. But if you were to put hydrogen first, you would have HO negative one. Well, if you try to say that as a word, you would say HO. Well, if it doesn't spell HO, so it's like you have an epiphany, like, Oh, I see. It's OH negative 1. So that's how I've always remembered hydroxide. And um, another one that I want to mention that's kind of difficult for students is cyanide. Cyanide ends in IDE. It's CN with a negative 1 charge, carbon and nitrogen with a negative 1. That's cyanide. That's a very poisonous um, substance, cyanide um, is. And then there's a thiocyanate, which is very similar. So thiocyanate and cyanide are very similar. SCN, same charge, negative 1. Notice you just added an S here. So this is cyanide. This is thiocyanate. Well, the reason thio, thio means sulfur is present. So notice there's a sulfur added to the cyanide. So this is hydroxide, this is cyanide, and this is thiocyanate. Okay, so some of you can get really probably more creative than, than I have with these, but hopefully this will help you as you're trying to memorize your formulas. The best way to commit these to memory is really like writing them down multiple times. So that's what I would suggest for you to do. Tomorrow our first quiz is going to um, cover the first 12 of these only, and you need to be able to write out the formulas from memory. That'll be our quiz number one. And then the next quiz we have is going to be on all 22. So that'll be our quiz number two is going to be on all 22 of them. So study those, use your flashcards, write them out. Um, 